first page of the manual for the test. So the next time I have to administer that test, I can just look at that sheet instead of reading through the manual. So I think if you, if you have, if your kid has pretty good typing skills, I think it's good for them to, uh, you know, have an easel that will hold their book open, and as they're reading, just type in main ideas, important vocabulary terms, and then when they're done, they can just print that out, and uh, there's their study guide, and they're, you know, whenever they have to prepare for a test, they can just read that. Does, it, does any of the teachers here, have you encouraged that kind of active strategy, or... Because see, what happens is a lot of kids go off to their rooms and they're pretty good kids and yet they sit there with their book and then they start to flick on the computer and or they start to talk on the, play on the phone or, or they just space out. So often it's, it's good if they have this goal, of, okay, I'm going to summarize this chapter and I'm going to type in ideas as I read it. Now, another good strategy, I think, is if they, if they aren't too embarrassed by the sound of their own voice, is to encourage them to use a recorder, um, uh, wherein, as they're reading, they can highlight, and then go back and record those highlighted parts. I know this sounds kind of OCD, but it really, is, it really works pretty good, because after you've highlighted everything, and then you go, or the, not everything, but selecting things, and then you go back and read those into the, into the recorder, and then you've got your study guide right there in your little recorder. And uh, that way you can just listen to it several times when you're preparing for a test. But I think the most important thing to remember when they're doing these active reading strategies is that the time is well spent. The time is well spent when you're sitting there studying because it isn't like you're reading the book and you flick, you know, you flip the page and you think, no, wait, what did I read? Instead, you're actively engaged. You're thinking, okay, I'm looking for something and then I'm going to type it. Or I'm looking for something and I'm going to highlight it. So, kids, especially who have ADHD, need that, need to be doing something while they're reading, uh, you know, reading uh, assigned readings and not. Um, and not, you know, on Facebook. And so they have to set a time span that they're going to do the work and be goal-oriented. So, because that is a major league problem with ADHD kids. Um, and so, okay, uh, you know, they could also jot down main ideas on a post-it note, um, and they may benefit from help with getting the main ideas, and you may need to purchase the textbook for them if they can't write in it. Or you may want to photocopy pages of reading and then have them highlighted. Um, or they, you could use a paper clip to break up the reading and have them read to that paper clip before they take a break. But again, still, they may just rush through it to get to the paper clip. So the idea is for them to be doing something as they're, as they're reading uh, and not just sitting there reading because they'll drift off and not retain it. They want to have, you, want them, you want them to have something concrete at the end of the reading. You want them to have, you know, some kind of um, notes that they can print out, or note cards, or post-it notes, or something, because they then they're going to have something they can rely on. Because their working memory is going to make them um, not retain it very well. Do any do kids ever tell you that, or do your own kids say that I read it, but I just have to go back and reread everything because I can't hold a, you know, a paragraph in mind. So, it's a common problem. And, you know, other things that help are to, you know, just teach them to use mnemonics for uh, memorizing. Now, some of this refers, I think, more to long-term memory, because you're talking about review and practice. Um, but they need to be taught how to highlight and to summarize and to um, use, you know, I think there's I think they still use it here, the uh, inspiration software. Are you familiar with that uh, piece of software that you can, uh, are, do any of you use that, inspiration? I think you can find it on the internet. And it creates those uh, graphic organizers where, where the, as the kid is reading, they can type in 
the main idea in the center bubble, and then the bubbles that go off, you can put supporting ideas and, and smaller bubbles for important details. So I think those are, that, again, that's an active strategy. Again, they're doing something instead of spacing it out. You know? um, and I think it's also really important, again, this is, this is more like a, a, an ADHD recommendation, but teach students a routine for beginning a task. Do any of you have kids who have trouble just getting started? Just initiating? So it's almost like they have to say, okay, here's the way I'm always going to initiate. I'm always going to do this, or I'm, here's where I'm going to sit, and, this, and I'll have my list, and I'll put things in order, and I'll turn on a timer, and I'll time myself, and, and I have to sit here for at least 20 minutes, and my goal is to get to this, or having them estimate, I will um, complete this task, I think I can do this task in 25 minutes, and then seeing if they can actually do it. You know, not, of course you don't want them to just whip through it, but you want to see if they can, that helps them, that also helps with slow processing, especially if you have slow processing, is to try to time yourself and to self-monitor and keep yourself going. Um, and some of these other things are very common things, you know, pra re repeating information when you're trying to learn something new and, uh, you know, using uh, lists and tables and visual graphs and having them draw pictures to help, uh, help them comprehend and retain it more successfully. Okay, so that was my last uh, working memory thing, but, you know, I, I really think that uh, Again, I think when it comes to working memory uh, and kids are asked to study alone, again, I'm repeating myself, but I think the most important thing is to find some strategies for them to get engaged with what they're doing and not just sitting there and reading it. Now, with math, they have to be engaged and with writing. But if they have reading assignments, then they should be doing something like, uh, you know, taking notes or, uh, and especially if they can type or, because otherwise they're going to read through something and just not retain it very well. And so it's going to be more meaningful. Okay, then I'm going to shift into processing speed. And this is uh, the other area that's measured on IQ tests. And this is a processing speed is a big one for, uh, and so is working memory, but processing speed is, is a big one for, you know, uh, I, I see a lot of kids who have ADHD and learning disorders and processing speed weaknesses. And it's really important, first of all, uh, for test taking. And then of course the other part is being able to um, get homework done so that they don't have to stay up till, you know. And I, I have, I've seen kids who are doing homework for five hours a night and you test their abilities and their processing speed is very low. It's like, you know, eighth percentile compared to you know, above average in other areas. And so processing speed just refers to the rate at which you can take in incoming and outcoming information and just be able to, you know, quickly perform, you know, overlearned tasks. Now we're not talking about, you know, high level reasoning tasks, although some people can do that too. They're just, they can even do really challenging problems pretty fast. But this is about being able to just do elementary tasks like write quickly or read quickly and, you know, uh, be able to recognize words or, as a, again, solve math facts quickly. Those things lead, again, when you've got, when you're automatic and you're able to do those things quickly, then you can move on to the actual, what is this problem, problem asking you to do or what is the, you know, what is the goal of my, uh, you know, what is the goal of this problem? Um, so it's about, it's the speed at which you process information and it's, it's all about being automatic so that skills, you can do some things so quickly that you, you it doesn't require much effort for you to do it. And so I, I know I've, I've, uh, I have to score this one test. It's a personality test that has, you have to use, um, or you have to use all four fingers on one, two, three, four for never, sometimes, often, almost always. And when I first 
start scoring that test. It was a real tedious thing. I had to go back and check my answers, and, and it's like 180 items, and now I can just do it without even thinking. You know, I'm scoring it just so quickly. Uh, of course, I could make mistakes, and someone could get a kind of a bad diagnosis. <laughs> no, no, but anyway, I, you know, there are some of those tests have a, uh, you know, a, a, a feature where you can go back and says, do you want to do it again to double check your accuracy? And I did that 